I think chairman will be joining from London very soon. Oh, that's great. That's mm-hmm. great. I sent, I sent it to her as oh, well. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we would like to have... <laughs> That's great. We yep, had, yep, I, was yep. supposed, I was supposed to have gone on a trip to Uganda. Would, oh. it, would, it, would have been this month. Mm. Oh, I see. At, at, at which time we were planning to go on to uh, Rwanda and Kenya while we Ooh. were there. Oh, wow. But COVID decided that that was not going to happen. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe because you took you took a wrong uh, destination. Nigeria will have been the best <laughs> in Africa. I know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Nigeria is the best. You can go and see the whole of Africa, all yeah. in one. All in one. Okay. Remember, Nigeria has two, over two hundred million people. That's right. Yeah. So those states, those countries you are visiting, they are like one state in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah yeah i know oh boy okay so we are a minute away from our start time um i want you to sit, sit back relax and enjoy the meeting when the president starts the meeting um just to ask that you keep your mics muted until you're asked to speak or you wish to speak and uh, remember we're recording and this video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel for those persons who missed the meeting. So just so you know, you're being recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, you may have to just turn off your mic and turn off your video. Um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you, Secretary Donet. And now the meeting is called to order. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's meeting. We'll have the invocation by Rotarian Christina. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Let us unite in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God. We stand in your holy presence. We humbly ask you to bless and inspire us so that everything that we think, say, or do will be in accordance with your will. Enlighten our minds, strengthen our spirits, and fill our hearts with love, wisdom, and understanding so that we can be an effective channel of truth, love, and compassion. May the spirit of harmony, peace, and mutual respect prevail over all this gathering so that we can move forward in serving others. Oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Let us observe a minute of silence for past president and honorary member Walter Christian, who passed away last week. Thank you. And now we have the loyal toast by Rotarian Melanie. Good morning, all. Would you raise your mugs or glasses to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas? To the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. Visiting Rotarian Secretary Donet. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, and as we're speaking, as you're speaking, President Francis, there are persons entering the room. We have a few visitors this morning. Um, I'll start with our visiting Rotarians. We have visiting all the way from Nigeria, PP Adetun. 
I'm sure Rubin wants to claim her as his guest, but she is very much a Rotarian, and this is, I think, her second time visiting with us, and we always love to have you. Welcome, President PP Adetun. Thank you. I see Glad we have... to be here. Yes, great. I see we also have visiting. Um, I don't know if it's a Rotarian, but I'm I'm assuming she's Rotarian because of the name and the and that she's from Nigeria as well, maybe from your club, Abiola. Yeah, Doctor Doctor Abiola Tiligado. Oh, okay, she's great. Welcome, Rotarian Abiola. Thank you. Lovely to be with you. Right. Good to good to see you, ma'am. Good to have you. Good to see you too. You've already brought some warmth into my immediate environment. I'm in the UK at the moment. Oh yeah, I was told. <laughs> Good to have you. Great to have you. Enjoy the meeting. We also have, um, I'm not seeing any, I'm still scanning just in case anyone joined since. Um, <clears throat> all right, we have guests of Rotarians and um, I'll start with my guest. My guest is Yvonne Gibson Sands, and Yvonne is a sales manager of the Centerville branch of Kalina. Um, welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And also, I, I she needs no one to invite her because she has an open invitation. She was our guest speaker last week, Simone Bo. Welcome, Simone. Thank you very much, John. I almost said Rotarian, Simone. That's right. Speak it. <laughs> Great to have you. We hope you enjoy the meeting. And just Thank in you. case I missed anyone, are there any other guests of Rotarians? Okay, so Rotarians, we ask that next week you invite a guest, share your Rotary happy and your Rotary love with someone else and invite them to the meeting. So I know at our physical meetings, we're accustomed to inviting friends and colleagues. And the same can happen for our Zoom meetings. All right, they're more convenient for, for many. And we'd love to have some of your friends visiting with us. So with that said, I, let me now welcome all our Rotarians, members of the Rotary Club of NASA Sunrise. Um, as usual, thank you for being here. But PP Kim just joined us from Turks and Caicos. Welcome, PP Kim. Thank you for everyone who's just coming in. Welcome. We feel like Good you're morning. now a member of our club. You're always <laughs> here with us. <laughs> it shows that you're enjoying our meeting. So welcome. Welcome, Rotarians all. all. Back to you, President. Thank you. And now I will ask Rotarians to welcome their guests, please. If you I have already, guests, I already did that, guests, President. Kindly welcome those. You I have. already did that, Thank President, you. and there were no visitors. There were no other. And visitors. a special welcome to all of our visitors this morning. Thank you. And now we'll invite our Sergeant at Arms, Father P, to come and bring us the jokes and finds. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Leon, 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 as my walking partner. <laughs> Are you with me? What are we being fine today? Today, what is my fine today? Uh, you find <laughs> all this here you're growing on your head, on your face. You gotta give me at least five dollars for that because I know you saved a lot of money with not going to the barber. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the new look. Okay, that's the new look. <clears throat> Ruben, yeah, no, you, nope, no problem, Father Palacios. Ruben, you had a whole lot to say today, and I'm sure you must feel real proud about your two compatriots who joined you. Give us $2 each for them, please. Some of that oil money that you have from Nigeria. Let us have some of that, please. But I'm not, I'm not a guest speaker, so why? I don't have lots to say. Yeah, I'm you, not saying uh, nothing. That's five dollars then, because okay. <laughs> you surely had a lot to say for somebody who's not the guest speaker. Uh, right. I'm going to levy a fine to everybody, everybody who could afford it, 
we need $5 for the disaster relief fund. Remembering, of course, that disaster isn't only the natural disasters that we hear a lot about, and of course, we seem to be threatened by a whole lot of that this time, uh, but really people that we are able to help very often our own members and others on a regular basis. So whoever could afford it, just, this ain't a fine, this is a, this is a levy. It is a discretionary thing as far as you are concerned. So just put it in. Is Cresswell on? I haven't heard from him for a little while. Anybody heard from Cresswell? No, Cresswell is not on at the moment. Lavelle, is Lavelle on? No, he's not. Oh, okay. I will find them in absentia. <laughs> whenever they whenever they show up again, they owe us some money. Those who don't have on their pins, including me, I, I just I'm supposed to put it on. <laughs> I do have on my and folio shirt though. Is, does that count, Madam President? Do I get yes, it? Does. Uh, yes, it, I, does. It, it does. Okay, then. Good. Donette, do you have something for us today? I, I'm cheating. I'm cheating and no. putting on my pen. You, you have your pen. No, I don't, Father P. I sent you a joke. Please read the joke. <laughs> well, go ahead, put it on. Let's see it. No, no, you have to read the joke. I can't put it on. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. I don't know how to put that on now. Okay. I guess. But Read it from your, your screen, your phone. That's, that's what I mean. I, oh boy. Dodge, I find myself $5 for having you as a friend and being a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't do me like that. Man. You use the phone. I, I, use I, your I, phone. I expected, I expected Donnet to come through with me. For me, Donnet. Uh, yeah, from Donnet. Donnet. Okay. Father P. Father P. I, I explained to you, I cannot share some of those videos because we'll be flooded okay, no, no, I, I for copyright. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, here it is. In a recent poetry contest hosted by Chairperson Janelle, we heard, we know of her. Students were given a word to write a poem. The word is Timbuktu. Kingsway Academy went first. And here it is. Across the hot Sahara sand trekked the dusty caravan. Men on camels two by two. Destination, Timbuktu. Well, Chanel replied, that is very good. St. John's College, that's Felix's alma mater. It's your turn. So the student cleared his throat and began. Tim and I a hunting rent. We met three cows under a pop-up tent. They were three and we were two. So I bucked one and Tim bucked two. Mm. Enjoy your day. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Madam President, can I help the Saj with a joke? Go ahead. Good. Now I see my good friend, Elspeth Johnson, on the chat on the meeting this morning. I respect him as a politician. He knows I have the greatest respect for him. But here's my joke. The problem with political jokes is that sometimes they get elected. <laughs> Nobody got that, right? <laughs> Thank All you, right. BDJ. <laughs> and now we'll ask How is Vice President Diana to for birthdays and anniversary for this month, please. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I can't keep calm because it's my birthday. Hello. On its oh, oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, Happy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, girl. And it's President Francis and Melanie Alkidas. And I 
think we have all the queens that were born in September. <laughs> so happy birthday. Thank you. Birthday. Thank you. Thank you. It's I not don't. Thank you. That's, a, that's an extra five dollars for having your birthday on this day. Your um, birthday is not uh, today. Didn't, didn't My birthday is actually next week, Thursday. There you go, Melanie. But we all fall in the month yeah. of September. All right. So she asked for birthdays for the month, right? Yes. Oh, okay. that's what I. That's what I. That's what I gave her. All right. Whose birthday is today? Nobody for the P. Oh. Right. So fine the P thought your birthday was today. So you'd end up paying fine today plus fine when your birthday actually comes. So no, I got it. No, I got it. Not. I got it, Don it. No, I got it. I follow. <laughs> I got it. I got it, Don it. I understand. And um and uh I'm just trying to to let you know that in addition to that, we also have Ricardo, whose birthday is to be celebrated also in the month of September on the 29th. Okay, that's Ricardo Godoy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So thank you very much. And happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, my dear. Enjoy. Happy birthday, darling. Thank you. This morning we celebrate our membership chair, Akima and her committee for an awesome membership and membership development month. Members were allowed, given an opportunity to express themselves and we heard just how the members felt last month. So let us give Rotarian Akima and her team Congratulations on a, an awesome membership month. Thank you, Akema. And now we are in the month of September. And on Saturday, this is Literacy Month. And so on Saturday, we had an awesome event the Reading Cafe took place, and the turnout was awesome. Thanks to, to our literacy chair and her team, Janelle. There were more than 100 persons in attendance. However, I am a little disappointed. There were only 12 persons from our club pre present at that time. So please, members, let us support our projects. Do not let the other clubs that we are currently partnering with outshine us. These projects are projects of ours. So members, let us step out and give Janelle and her team the support that she deserves. Thank you. And now if there are any other announcements, we'll hear from those chairs, please. Good morning. Good morning. I just, I just like to remind everybody to go ahead, go online and register for the peace conference that's going to be taking place on the 19th. It's going to be an international peace conference, so it's going to be nationally, and we have a huge lineup of who's who in the law, law and order industry we have the commissioner of police we're going to have the prime minister we're going to have the minister we're going to have the chief oh. justice we have a huge lineup so we, i encourage everybody to please go ahead and register for the conference thank you hello thank you too. hello as disaster chair may i just remind people that Clint, there are several potential storms out in the Atlantic. We don't know what would happen to us, but let us be prepared. Rotarians should not be the ones on the long lines two or three days before a disaster comes. Our whole 
our motto ought to be that we are the ones to help others to be prepared. And that the best way to do that, of course, is to be prepared ourselves. And that's from the disaster chair. So let's try to do that personally. And then later on, we can help others. Um, Madam, Pre Madam President, I have an announcement as well. <clears throat> um, and I would like to ask that, that uh, the information received la at last night's meeting, please share it on Facebook with our members. Thank you. Madam now President, I have, I have an announcement. May I? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so um, we have a, our first virtual fundraiser coming up on Sunday, September 20, starting at 5 p.m. It's a play, an award-winning play, written by Deborah Earhart, and it's called Jamaica Farewell. So you may have seen stuff on social media or in the WhatsApp group. We're trying to ensure that we entertain you, but we also raise funds for the club. Um, so to register, you register using either the Zoom link or through Club Runner, and then an invoice will be sent to you for payment. Um, the cost of the play is $25, but if you have a business that you wish to promote on the play bill, then the cost will differ. So please send me a note <clears throat> and I will, you know, give you the cost if you want to do more than just attend the play. Um, it will include a very nice raffle and we hope that persons will buy more than just the general admission. It's a great play. Um, it's a one woman play and she plays all 20 characters. I've seen it twice already and believe me, I'm looking forward to seeing it, to watching it again with you guys. So please register with the link that was sent to you, register on Club Runner or through our Facebook page and we really want to see you all turning out on September 20 at 5 p.m. You will not regret it, it's an awesome play. Also, um, just to say that we have some persons who joined us um, after we did the welcome. We have um, Minister Ellsworth. We're always happy to have you with us. And we have PP Delisa, and there's Craig Powell visiting. Not sure if he's Rotarian or a guest of Rotarian, but we welcome you to the meeting and hope that you'll enjoy. Um, yeah. Also, the raffle for this morning, this is my final one, is a pen and pencil set. Of course, it's Literacy Month, and so what's reading without writing? And this is compliment of our Rotarian Huey from John Bull. So if you're interested in the raffle, please enter that into the chat. Let me know. The tickets are one for $5 and three for $10. So you can use the chat to purchase your raffle tickets. Thank you. Back to you, President Francis. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Good morning. Good morning, Janelle. Oh, hi. Good morning, everyone. Just had to make sure I have a microphone check there before I got started. It is the second week of September, and as you all know, literacy, the latest hashtag lit, it continues. And so um, this weekend is jam packed again. Every weekend in, in September, we have something going on. Um, we had our, our poetry competition already. We already know who the winners are. Look out for an announcement tomorrow. We're going to announce our winners tomorrow. Um, we're preparing for a super reader scatter hunt. Um, we just read in our club. We read, we have fun, we write, we dance. So you'll be seeing a lot coming out in the next couple um, of weeks about that. Um, the online poetry cafe wow. was a success, a smash success, as President Francis said. Um, those of you who missed it, you really missed the thing. So holy next year, you'll be there. Um, we also had our men and menti, mentor menti workshop. Um, that was a success. This sweet Saturday, um, it's all about writing. So we doing last week, this week, all about writing. We have a write to win workshop. And I partnered with Connection Creative. 
Um, that is a listing company in New York City. We have Arthur from Connecticut, New York City, and our very own Namas. They're going to be sharing insight on how to write, the types of writing, writing styles, vocabulary for writing is going to be amazing. And then coming up on September 26th, you know, um, we have our speech, our second annual speech petition, and in preparation for that, Toastmasters host a workshop. So you see, we don't just competition, we prepare our participants because we want everybody to win and do well. And there's so much more to come. Um, please follow us on Facebook if you're visiting. This is the Lydia's Club. We are based on principle of literacy. And I just want to shout out to Ms. Moon Bo. She's an English language teacher in, in college and she did an awesome job. And so this passion, um, she has a role and passion for literacy. So Samoon, I am so happy to see you. You are in greatest club and I, I look forward to you working my committee. If you just volunteer, I will be reaching out to you. So mm -hmm. Sunrise, have a great day and please support literacy projects during the entire month of September. Your committee is working start behind the scenes to bring literacy to life. Thank you and have a good day, everybody. Thank you, Jan Rogerian, Janelle, you too. Have a great one. And now, our topic for today <coughs> is advancing technical and vocational education in a COVID environment. That said, I will invite now PDG Felix to introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. My, my respects to Minister Johnson and President and family of Rotary, good morning. It is morning. very difficult for me, but first of all, let me thank all the guest speakers who came before me for a wonderful presentation already for the morning. But when I tried to attempt to introduce our guest speaker, I don't think I can do him justice unless I was a guest speaker myself. So I want to suggest to this club that during Vocational Services Month, we insist that he comes and does um, my job talk because he has such an interesting history. It'll be very educational. I'm reading from a letter he wrote back in August 2015. I'm gonna paraphrase. His educational background reflects a multidisciplinary series of programs completed in Canada, United States, and the United Kingdom. He holds a doctoral degree in management and, or in, and sorry, organization from Stirling University, Scotland. In addition, he completed a postgraduate diploma in international management China from the University of London and an executive education, sorry, an executive certificate in strategy and innovation at the famous Sloan School of Management, MIT. In addition to that, um, in terms of his, well, in addition to his academic achievements, he's written over 30 peer reviewed articles, over 60 educational presentations, and he's had over 40 appointments and awards, and he has more than seven professional affiliations. In terms of his experience, he has served for more than 12 years, and this was back in 2015, so it's now 17 years, in full-time teaching and senior management positions within the educational sector. His experience has included serving as faculty member, dean of business, MBA director, dean of graduate programs, and vice president of academic affairs for profit, not for profit, and public institutions in the United States and overseas. <clears throat> I need to break down those overseas for you. And I'm only calling the names of, that I can pronounce. We serve in Slovenia, <laughs> Taiwan, Singapore, Brazil, Italy, Costa Rica, France, Canada, of course, the United States, and now the Bahamas. I like to think I was responsible for bringing him to the Bahamas, but he may say different. 
Um, Dr. Bob came to the Bahamas in 2016 to oversee the transformation of BTVI. And I have to say that uh, for those of you who are familiar with BTVI, you know the wonderful job he did. So again, my request is that we ask Dr. Bob to come and speak with us. It's all about himself at some point in time so that we can get to know this wonderful material that we have in our midst. So ladies and gentlemen, family of Rory, please help me introduce Rotarian, Paul Harris times two, maybe three now, Robert Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Stubbs. I, um, I just want to share some things with you this morning, obviously, about BTBI and, and responding to COVID. So I'll be pretty focused with respect to that particular topic. Um, we heard last week from Minister Lloyd about the challenges faced in the Bahamas at the high school and elementary levels. And so today we'll look at it from a tertiary school point of view. The um, agenda briefly, I do have some slides obviously, but the agenda briefly will be to um, take a look at um, the pivot to online internationally, the kind of background and context, a little bit about BTVI and our response. And then I wanna focus on the future of technical and vocational education because I think that's critically important for us here in the Bahamas but also uh, globally. So as you know, uh, COVID caught everyone by surprise and so in March of 2020, more than a billion students, almost 14 or 15 percent of the world's population students are in school and they were impacted and so they left school in March, almost everyone around the world, unprecedented. Um, about 50% of those still have no education options available to them. So about 500,000, uh, 500 million, I should say, went back to um, school in one form or the other, uh, blended or online, but about 50% have no options. And so that's a tragedy as you see this unfold. There's so many students globally in Africa and other parts of the world, Canada, all, all over the place, who are just having no educational options. And I think that's a a critical issue that we need to, uh, to think about in terms of context. However, about 50% of those other uh, billion students moved to online. And by moving to online, I think there was a significant grinding of years. A lot of people who um, thought about it and, and had some experience in online realized that the move in March to online was really a shame in some respects uh, because it wasn't really online, but it was helpful in some other ways because it forced people to see what online can and can't do. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So essentially online is simply using technology to deliver content. Um, by content, we're talking about reading materials. We're talking about lectures, either live or recorded. We're talking about assignments that people have to do, maybe uh, cases. <laughs> quizzes, simulations, um, a variety of different things. And online has really changed over the last number of years to reflect all of those. Um, I often am asked to provide a guest lecture. In fact, I just did one last week for a number of MBA students working at the Samsung factory outside of Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And so it's a uh, it's a very interactive class. Um, if you have a Samsung phone, it probably was built in, in this factory in Vietnam. And Samsung is trying to build capacity amongst its middle and senior managers by having them take a US MBA. So frequently I'm asked to be a guest lecturer and I, I really enjoy that. It's um, interesting to see how the technology affords that opportunity globally. And they feel the same way. They really enjoy the experience of talking to you know, somebody in this case from the Bahamas, they, they think that's uh, pretty cool. Um, it's an early start for me. It's about 6 a.m., uh, which is 6 p.m. their time, but it just gives you a sense of how online can bridge ge geographic gaps. Um, anyway, the other major sort of global issue is that education budgets are under significant pressure globally, as they are here in the Bahamas. Uh, the World Economic Foundation suggests that there's a reduction of more than $88 billion over an 18 month period as governments come to grips with the fact that in fact they have no money. And so it's increasingly difficult for them to support educational initiatives. So briefly the concerns with respect to online are um, accessibility in terms of equity, um, devices, 
and the internet. We see that um, right now it's very difficult to get a device. Uh, logistics and supply are so uh, stretched. Uh, people are having a hard time getting computers, um, tablets, laptops in particular. Uh, we're having difficulty here in the Bahamas in getting devices. Um, internet is not as good as it might want to be in certain areas. Uh, sometimes students have devices, but they can't get on them because of the internet situations. Um, another concern is quality control. Uh, you need to ensure that the quality of the content and the program and the instructor is sufficient. And we have a significant problem uh, in the Bahamas with respect to quality control. And that's not a criticism, it's just a fact. And it's a similar fact in other places. Um, we're currently working with the Ministry of Education. Uh, we're delivering some programs for teachers that I'll speak to in a few minutes to try to improve the quality of the teaching online. And then finally, engagement. Um, sometimes the computer can be a cold technology, and so we need to ensure that we engage students. And not every student can pick that up, and not every teacher can make it an engaging medium. It's not the way we're programmed to learn. And so that's a, a, po a potential concern. Now, the benefits are flexibility. Um, we can deliver content from here in Nassau, anywhere in the Bahamas or anywhere in the world, frankly. Um, the government is not going to be able to build uh, centers for education in every island that are equal in terms of quality uh, but, and scope, but we can deliver very good quality from, from here or from Freeport or anywhere else. Uh, so it's very flexible. We started introducing online about two or three years ago, and people here were surprised that one of the biggest groups picking up on the online and continuing to advocate for it were people in Nassau. And think about it, if you work all day um, at five o'clock, instead of going home, you have to get in your car, drive to BTBI and take a class. If it's online, you can drive home, put on your pajamas or whatever else you wanna put on and take the class at home. You don't have to fight traffic. So the flexibility is, very apparent. And you can see that if you teach online, people go online at different times, maybe after the kids go to bed or first thing in the morning, but the flexibility is driven by you, the learner, not by the school. Because in the past, historically, the school set up the program and you have to meet their time frame. You have to go to school in September, you finish in December, you go at nine in the morning, you finish at five, but the flexibility of online is so significant. I think people are surprised at how valuable that is. Um, there's certainly cost benefit advantages to going online. Uh, there are upfront costs, but over time they can be paid back and you can really get more penetration for less money. And so it's as an investment, I think a good one. And it certainly meets the needs of a broader range of students. The student of 2020 is not the traditional kind of student out of high school. Um, we, at BTBI, we have a lot of police officers, for example, or defense force officers or nurses, people who are maybe posted to a, a family island and during the day they do their work and at night they're perhaps away from their family and having an online program gives them an option to improve their own personal and professional skills. And we see that in all kinds of different areas. So in terms of BTBI, um, we have about 5,000 students students annually and we provide certificates, diplomas and associate degrees and a lot of customized training. Now, interestingly, some people are surprised by the fact that our enrollment this term is down 18%. This is precisely what I had suggested would occur in March. And the reason for this is a lot of our students are cash payers. Now we do have scholarships available from the government and they are very helpful. Um, but if you're a cash paying student and you're out of work, you're not going back to school. There's no question about it. Um, the data in the US supports exactly the same thing. In the US, co uh, community college enrollment is off anywhere from 18 to 28%. We're off about 18%, so we're precisely the same as US schools, and that's the reason. Cash payers are not going back to school if they don't have a job to go to. It makes sense. Your first priority is to eat. You probably have a family who has developed a dependence on food every day, and so you're not going back to school. On the other hand, the government scholarships have been significant in helping people um, to come back. And so some people have taken advantage of that. 
And we also have a number of specific programs that the government has uh, pushed forward as a way to address the current COVID economic situation. And so, for example, this week, um, it'll be announced, I think, officially next week, we have 700 students coming to us who will take soft skills training. Uh, we also have another 100 students who will be involved in apprenticeship training, and these will be certified uh, programs that we're talking about. So in, in, ov in overall terms, our, our um, enrollment will be up about 6%. But it's interesting that, and not interesting, I guess, but it's a shame that our cash paying students are down by 18%. It just tells you what's happening economically. <clears throat> we have an added emphasis on industry certifications. <clears throat> we feel these are critically important. So we are a Cisco Academy. We push a lot of students out the door with Cisco um, credentials, Cisco certifications. And as I'll point out in a minute, that's a gold mine currently in terms of employment opportunities. Uh, we just received an award as the leader in the Caribbean and Latin America for CompTIA, which is a significant um, industry standard for technology. We offer Microsoft certifications, NCCER, which stands for the National Center for Construction Education and Research. This is really important. Um, a few weeks ago, I guess it was probably in July now, I happened to be at a at a restaurant in the Cable Beach area and you went inside and ordered and then you came back out and waited for your food to be ready. And I was listening to two young guys, obviously construction guys, talking about Brockville, Ontario. And so I got talking to them and they said to me, do you know where Brockville is? I said, yes, I grew up about 50 miles away from Brockville. And so we had a nice chat and I said to them, what are you guys doing here? And they said, well, we're working at a big project just down the road, uh, a water park project. I won't tell you the name of the hotel, but it's a big water park project. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, in any case, they said, I said to them, that's really cool. How did you guys get a job here? And this one young man told me, he was very proud about it. He said, sir, I'm a Red Seal carpenter. Do you know what that is? I said, yes, actually I do. And so he was here because of his certification. Well, NCCER is a similar qualification, but it's an American one that American companies would tend to use. And so what we're trying to do is get Bahamian carpenters, plumbers, electricians certified to this internationally accepted standard so that construction companies won't have to go to the government and say, look, we can't find certified uh, people to work on these big projects. It's very important that we have these certifications. There are a number of big projects in the pipeline. Uh, Disney has a few big ones, one in Eleuthera, one in <clears throat> Grand Bahama. And so we want to be ready when they come in. And we've actually talked to Disney and we've said to them, is NCCER the kind of thing that you would look for and your construction companies? And they said, yes. Um, we also have these articulation agreements in the UK, the US and Canada. And so um, these are two plus two. So you can take two years of education at BTVI for free if you have a government scholarship. And then you can take the last two years at a uh, school in say Florida or in Canada, including online. And so you can get a bachelor's degree for essentially half the cost that you could if you just went into it and paid the cash for it. And I, I just I encourage you as a parent, a grandparent or someone who knows, you know, who's paying the bills, that's a significant cost savings. And so the reason we have these articulation agreements is because the, the quality of the programs that we offer has increased uh, dramatically over the last few years. And in addition to the certifications I mentioned, we also have city and guilds accreditation. So, so you can take these credits from BTVI and port them to another institution, or you can port them to UB as well, if you wish. But most of our students are looking at programs that are more generally offered elsewhere. So I only have a couple other quick slides, but in terms of the COVID response, um, we had in March more than 400 courses that were running. And so when we came to the shutdown in March, which obviously surprised everybody, um, we made some quick decisions and we ported literally ported these 400 courses to an online platform within 72 hours. Now, I know some schools that are still porting courses over from March. They just haven't been able to do it. It's not that easy to do. And we were able to do it because we had some experience with online. And frankly, we have some very good uh, people. And so they literally put these courses online within 72 hours. 
Um, we use a virtual learning environment called Moodle, which is an open uh, software. And so we had students uh, or faculty and some graduate st uh, students who are senior in their programs uh, ensure that the courses being ported over were uh, proper in terms of consistency and quality. Um, in addition, because teaching online is a little different, we set up a series of nano degree courses to train all of our faculty to improve teacher technical skills with respect to computers. So we now have about 22 courses that we call nano degree courses on technology. We have a buffet of courses. And as we started to develop these, we talked to the minister who said, wow, we have the same problem with the Ministry of Education. Could you offer some of these courses to our teachers? And so, and these courses, by the way, have BTVI credit, but they also have industry credit like Cisco or CompTIA or other things. So they are, they are good courses. They issue certificates, but also a digital badge. So in any case, we offered these nano degree courses to the Ministry of Education teachers starting this week. We had a cohort established with a maximum of 250 students, teachers. Um, that course as of this morning has 367 in the course, 120 more than, than we anticipated. So we've closed enrollment for that cohort. We just can't take any more right now. But the intent is, and the minister supports this, is to have a thousand or two thousand of the teachers in the MOE take these courses because they're so excited about what they see in the courses and the value that they offer to the teachers. We also developed a course um, for a little video for students to teach them about online education, why it's important, how to stay on top of things. And so if you take a BTVI course now, you start out with this little video and a lot of, a lot of um, online schools don't do that. They literally push you into a course cold. And if you're inclined not to be supportive of online, that's the last thing you need to see. You need some kind of welcome here's how it works. We're here to support you. Um, we've also set up what, a, what I call a 311 call center. So if you're a student and you've never turned on a computer, you don't know how it works, um, you can call another student and they will help you to fix it. So it's like a call center for troubleshooting. Um, in, since March, I'm really proud about this, since March we've had more than a thousand hours of faculty professional, 11,000 hours of faculty professional development training. These are, and some people said to me, you shouldn't have forced the faculty to do all of that. These were not a command performance. We said to people, it's helpful, it's of value to you personally and professionally. Here's a range of courses that you can take. Almost all of them are for free. Well, we did do some work with the Commonwealth of Learning, but we had 11,000 hours of professional development training. So the product between March and September is markedly improved, I think, because of that. Teachers will tell you that, as will students. Um, but equally as important to that, a lot of times we hear anecdotal evidence about the pros and cons of online learning. Um, I think it's better to use evidence to discuss that. And so we did a survey of our spring online students. 70% of the students were first, that was their first online course. Um, I mean, as I said, we had online courses before, so that's what there's a difference of 30%. But the point we're really proud about is 85% said they were either satisfied or very satisfied with the quality of COVID learning experience. Now, there's still 15% who aren't. And likely if you parse that, it's maybe a bit higher, but um, you know, but that's a pretty high number given the fact we were forced online. And the concerns that came out of the survey, as we talked earlier, a number of students in the Bahamas um, had internet and connectivity issues. That was a, that's a big problem. So we need more sort of hot spots where people can get on. Um, and a lot of students, it wasn't necessarily the lack of computer equipment, it's because it was shared excuse me, everybody went online at the same time. So mother was using a computer for work. Johnny was using a computer for high school. Another child was using the same computer. So it's not like there was a lack of computer, it was sort of a lack of computers with a plural. Um, so those were the concerns in the spring and we've tried to address that as well. Uh, we have loaner equipment for uh, faculty. Uh, in fact, we have a purchase agreement with the faculty where they can buy a computer at a discounted rate over time. 
uh, for students. We provide um, opportunities for them to come into specific centers and social distancing. They can use computers. We have some loaners, some Chromebooks. Um, we were delighted to have some support from the Rotary Club a Disaster Fund uh, for computer purchase. And so we now have computers available. We have students active in Abaco right now. We have students active in Freeport, although in Freeport our enrollment is down about 50% because they're still struggling, but they have access to computers and the Rotary Club was very helpful in helping in bringing us uh, some money for computers that, that's been um, very well received. Um, by the way, we also have an event next week with Rotary. We have a, um, a first ever conflict resolution road to peace uh, session going on at BTVI that will be taped by, and sent to various classes by Zoom. And so we feel that if we can get some uh, conflict resolution skills into our first year students, it will be a benefit to them throughout their entire academic career and their lives. So my last couple of slides are on the future of technical and vocational training. Um, one of the things that people who aren't fans of online tell me is that, well, next term will be okay. Guys, we're not gonna be okay next term. <laughs> online and blended learning is here to stay. Now, next term, many schools have already said they're fully online, Cambridge, um, Oxford, all, a lot of the big schools have said we're online until at least June of 2021 and then possibly pass that in some kind of a blended format. Um, we're, we're not gonna turn a switch and go back to what it was previously. So we really need to think about it that way. We, and we have some faculty as well who keep telling me that, well, you know, we'll be back to normal in January. That's just not gonna happen. And so we need to think about it from the long-term perspective. In that respect, the digital skills are critical for everyone including technical and vocational areas. Um, we recently, before the COVID event, I think it was February of 2020, we attended uh, a session at Valencia College and we got to see how they use technology to um, train people to weld. Uh, so they use the initial exposure to welding is via a computer. A uh, very costly piece of equipment, around $50,000, but essentially you can take a, an American Welding Society certification from the Bahamas without having the equipment. Now you would have to go somewhere to do a physical test at some point, but, uh, but increasingly technical subjects are available electronically and online, which is the point about more use of simulation and technical options. And my last two side slides are from the um, European, the European um, Union on what, what is happening, um, or sorry, I have one other slide on the future of technology and then two slides from the European Union. So there will be an increased reliance on short specific job ready courses. These have to be professionally certified. Um, and so you'll see us roll out uh, this term a number of short courses. Um, historically, community colleges work on like a 15 week cycle. Nobody's life operates on a 15 week cycle. If you are inclined to be a carpenter or a plumber or a professional in any of those trades, you wanna get on with it. And so we'll be having specific training in those areas um, that will be available very quickly. And again, the government has provided some support for us to do that. So that, that will make that a reality, a possibility. Um, all of the programs need to be um, kind of linked to career paths. And so we're really going to focus on dual enrollment with high school students. Uh, too often we, we don't look at the grade 11 and 12 students, many of whom are adrift because they're not academically inclined. Uh, we need to provide for them a career path that would lead them to, I think, a very valuable um, opportunity for them professionally. Uh, the, the trades are very much in demand everywhere. There's big projects in the United States that can't go forward because they can't find the right plumbers, welders, carpenters. So there's significant demand for technical people. Um, one of the success stories is an ICT program, which is a, another government initiative that started in Freeport. We have 150 students each year. So grade 10 started two years ago and then grade 10 and 11, and now we're in grade 10, 11, and 12. Uh, these students end up with a BTVI certificate, uh, 15 courses, 12 of which are industry certified. Now already the grade 12 students are looking at options for next year. 
uh, they will be able to go into a university in the US with our articulation agreements and finish a bachelor's degree coming out of high school in a year and a half. Um, so that's a, a real, a real kudo to, to uh, the Bahamas in, in terms of staying with that program over the three year period. So the European Union has said that going forward post COVID, these are the skills that will be in demand. So the first one is leadership in a virtual world. We all know how difficult it is, you know, um, trying to manage a, a Zoom environment for uh, uh, any particular purpose, whether it be rotary or classes, but, you know, you have to be able to understand the technology and, and lead and motivate people, many of whom are kind of traumatized by, by, the, by the COVID scenario. Many people are personally impacted by it. And so it's kind of hard to, uh, <clears throat> to keep people, students focused on, you know, the end goal. Uh, emotional intelligence, working well with other people, particularly in, a, in an era where we are socially distanced, that's, that's pretty uh, challenging. Like Rotary Club, for example, we meet regularly, face-to-face uh, uh, -face with a meal. That's the, that's the kind of background of, of Rotary. It's, it's a lot more difficult now. Um, uh, the technological skills, as I pointed out, and competencies are really critical. Specific ones around digital data and coding will be very important going forward past, uh, past the, uh, the current problem. And then the final sets of skills are adaptability. Um, one of the things that we see in any scenario is that, you know, change is inevitable in any career, in any life. I mean, historically, when I graduated from university many years ago, people said, well, you finished university, you'll never have to darken the doors of an academic institution again, you'll get a job and you'll be there for life. Well, that didn't happen in my life and it certainly won't happen for anybody younger than me. Um, you have to be able to adapt and change your focus and your direction and react to things that are occurring. Uh, those who can adapt better are more inclined to be successful and most of us aren't though, most of us are very risk adverse, but it is important to um, have adaptability skills. We also have to be creative and innovative. Uh, the one thing that COVID I think has taught everybody is that necessity is the mother of invention. And so a lot of people have become pretty good at teaching online, even if they didn't think they could be, because they had to be. Um, this one I put in for Miss Cambridge, uh, no, this is actually from the survey. L literacy is very important. Um, you do need to be able to, um, you know, to have the basic skills of reading. And for those of you who aren't aware, uh, BTVI has just hit a home run and hired a new head of English department. Her name is Jen L. Cambridge, uh, our fellow Rotarian. So as we say at BTVI these days, we're on fire. And some of you will know what that means because Ms. Cambridge always says we're on fire. So we've hired her as our head of English. And so we're going to focus on literacy and make it a real requirement across all of our um, courses. And the, the final one is critical thinking. Um, it's very important that people are able to take a look at what is happening using evidence-based management, make career decisions uh, that reflect, reflect opportunities for them, and so critical thinking. So in any case, those are the eight skills that the European Union has just announced as critically important for the post-COVID environment. Um, since it is uh, a presentation by an academic, I always have to show you references just in case somebody challenges me on making those up. And then finally, uh, some students working with, of all things, rotary purchased computers. I had to uh, put that in as well. So interestingly, just as I finish, um, I have to do this presentation again later today at the Rotary Club of West Nassau. And then two weeks from today, I've been asked to do a similar presentation to the Rotary Club of Stirling, Scotland. Uh, as Mr. Stubbs had mentioned, I did a PhD in Stirling many years ago, and uh, I had attended that club a few times. And so I, I keep in touch with them from time to time. And they found out I was doing this presentation and they said, wow, that's kind of interesting. Could you do something similar for us? So this presentation will get uh, more than double duty. In any case, I'll close there. I think I'm past my time, but uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, um, to answer them.
Are there any questions for Dr. Rob? I want to sneak in a congratulations to our own Janelle. Way to go, Janelle. Congratulations from the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. Uh, I have a question. Uh, morning. Uh, Dr. Robinson, uh, in this uh, what we call pandemic period, where uh, everything is becoming technology, how is the, how will the uh, outsourcing computers and other stuff really affect uh, the learning process? Like you said, uh, finding these computers now are difficult. I actually, well, all the cheap ones. Mm -hmm. uh, how will that affect the learning curve now? If someone, will there be a, like a computer bank, whereas you rotate classes and you come to a certain area, if you do not have computers, like you'll come to either BTVI or go to a library or something like that, how will that affect uh, this learning at BTVI now uh, in this era? Right, so there's kind of two things that are happening. In the first instance, you can actually access your computer courses, your online courses on your phone. And so a lot of students are pretty adept at being able to do that. Uh, but we do have, because of the internet connectivity issue, we do have some hotspots that we have available for students in Nassau and Freeport and even in Abaco. Uh, and so we also have a physical location that they can go to. They can come to the main campus and we have what are called boot camps. So certain students can come at certain times and use the computers in the lab, um, you know, using social distance, et cetera. So we're looking at a myriad of solutions because not every solution is suitable for every student. So we try to find different opportunities for each, for each of them to take, take advantage of. Are there any other questions? Are there no other questions? Over to you, President. Oh, I see. PAG Karen. There's a question from um, AG Carlo, President. There's a question from AG Carlo. AG Carlo, would you like me to read it or you'll ask the question? And so the question is, will community programs, DIYs, be yes, accommodated online, or does everyone have to take an, accredit an accredited course? No, we'll have a number of uh, professional development courses that are not for credit, and they'll be focused on a specific skill or competency, uh, whether it be a craft skill, for example. I think there's going to be a big That's demand for that as we see uh, Disney open opening up their uh, resorts in Eleuth South Eleuthera and in Grand Bahama. Um, we want to have uh, Bahamians trained in, in what's of interest to them. Uh, we also want to have a, a series of short courses on entrepreneurship. And so um, students will be able, if you're a plumber, for example, or a carpenter, and you want to go into business for yourself, you need to know some uh, skills about how to start a business, how to operate it. So we will offer a number of these, not for credit, but, um, but skill-based courses, and they will be um, at, a, at basically at a cost recovery. We don't want to make any money on these. Obviously, we want to make sure we get the skill set out there properly. Good stuff. Um, I don't see any other questions, Madam President. You may continue. Thank you, and I will invite PAG Karen to give the vote of thanks, please. Good morning. Thank you, President Francis, and thank you very much to our very own Dr. Bob for a very comprehensive and timely presentation um, on BTVI's pivot to online learning. As you mentioned, um, you were already doing it to some extent, and now you pivoted very quickly in March, and I think that your assistance to the Ministry of Education is noted and very much appreciated in getting our teachers trained up to embrace this new online education platform. So thank you very much for all that you're doing for BTVI and training our Bahamians. On behalf of NASA Sunrise, we're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, PAG. PG, PAG. And now before I move on to the raffle, 
We do have two visiting Rotarians with us, one from Nigeria, the other from the UK. Are you ready for the raffle now, President? Okay, I see Dino wants to be added. Three tickets, Dino. Yes, please. Okay, so we're about to draw our raffle. And um, let me shuffle this card. Okay, let me shuffle. Um, all right, so are you ready? So the first prize is the um, pen and pencil set from John Bull, courtesy of our own Rotarian Huey Simmons. Oh my God. Oh, Felix. Felix, you just hey, entered. Hey, Felix. <laughs> Congratulations, F Felix. And I believe this raffle is not fixed. Felix, <laughs> Felix, you need to, you see how it came close to being me? You should give me the pen and you keep I was looking pencil. at my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have um, five more, so I'm going to do them quickly. And these are tickets to attend or play. Jamaica farewell and trust me I think this will be a real treat let's go Tanya congratulations Tanya yeah. so Tanya so that you don't win again I'm removing you all right and so we'll go again hey what did I win ticket to Jamaica farewell <laughs> oh, Minister Ellsworth, you're also a winner for a ticket to Jamaica Farewell. <laughs> PDG you? Felix, I'll be willing to exchange with you if you're interested. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do an exchange? Uh, this uh, looks uh, like Therese. Okay, Just Therese, asking. you have a free ticket to Jamaica Farewell. We remove Thank you so you. that you don't win again. Okay. All right. Who is next? Oh, congratulations, Rotarian Patrick. And I think that's well deserved. You buy the raffle every week. I remove you so that you don't. And this is our final one, final ticket to Jamaica Farewell. <laughs> No, Felix. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations. Sorry, congratulations. Congratulations. And thank you guys for Tanya, would you like to change now? <laughs> oh yeah, you know, I have two tickets. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for participating in the raffle. Back to you, yes, President indeed. Francis. Thank um, you. That one President and now Francis. we have two visiting Rotarians with us, one from Nigeria and the other from the UK. I would like for them to briefly explain, tell us about your club. Very briefly, please. Thank you. Hello, President. I didn't hear that. To explain what, please. Hello. Hello. Can you briefly tell us about your club, please? Oh, um, good morning all, good afternoon from Lagos. Um, I'm the past president of Rotary Club of Ikoi, one of the clubs in District 9110 Nigeria, and we are based in Lagos. We have uh, 93 members at the moment. Most of our activities are now online because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. 
a very vibrant club. We lead to several clubs outside even of um, Nigeria. And um, you know, we do a lot of uh, big projects in collaboration with other clubs and also on our own. We pride ourselves as one of the top and best clubs in the district. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be doing Rotarian from the UK. Can you tell us a little bit uh, uh, briefly about your club? Uh, actually, thank you very much. Um, you could just have given a little a double time because we are in the same club. And um, she actually introduced me to Rotary Club of Ikoi, and I'm enjoying that tremendously. At the same time, Ruben uh, and I worked together some years ago uh, at the College of Health Technology, where I am the chairman of the governing council. So it's a pleasure to see you again, Ruben, and it's a pleasure to see our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas. And I've enjoyed myself today tremendously. I would really have loved to buy the raffle, but I don't have a PayPal account, but um, I'll see how we can get around that. Congratulations, everybody. And I enjoyed, enjoyed, enjoyed the presentation. If the slides could Thank be shared, I would love it. Thank you. Um, I'm, in Nigeria, you know, but I'm based here at the moment in the UK because I'm helping my older daughter with her first baby. So that's why I'm here in the UK at the moment. Thank you and have a wonderful, safe week. Thank you. Thank you, Yondi. Wish you the same. And now we'll have Ask Rotarian Dino to bring the four way test, please. Good morning, everyone. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is it, is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will, will it, it build, build goodwill and better friendships? And finally, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Rotarian Dino. And now the final toast, Rotarian Shinova. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. To Rotary mm. around the world. The rotary around the world. Rotary around the world. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And a, and a special a good morning. And a special good morning to my guest, Mr. Craig Powell. Hey. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting meeting. Very, very interesting. I very enjoyed the presentation, particularly the point of the certifications in the beginning. It was interesting hey, that somebody from all the way away could be here because of a certification. So this needs to be put into place, definitely. Thank you. Craig, were you not a founding member of Reef that's off at Sunrise? I have a very good friend, Diane Miller, who is uh, supporting my, my presence here. No, I looked at the initial membership for NASA Sunrise and it was a Craig Powell listed. I thought it was you. Well, I think there's only one of me, at least I hope so. <laughs> there's another guy running around using my name. Let's hope he's doing it in goodwill. But uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to join a couple months, a couple of, well, nearly a year ago, but I never got completed. So if you want to, uh, to uh, bring that to fruition, let's do this. But I am a member of NES. I should be a member of um, Cable Beach West. Rotary. Okay. But you can have dual membership, right? No. 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 Thanks, Yvonne, for you being here. Pillars, man. 
Thank you, okay. everyone. Have a great day. And thank you for all those who joined us this morning. We had up to 45, 46 persons for a breakfast meeting. That's awesome. Thank you Morning. so much. Morning. 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 Everyone. Thank you. Okay, Thank you, everyone. Breakfast is on the table. And goodbye from Lagos. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again Thank soon. You. Thank you. For bye -bye. And goodbye from Peterborough in the UK. Yes. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us. Have a, have a good day. Day. And goodbye from New Providence. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Lavelle, you missed your friend this morning. I think you need to speak with Father P. He has something for you. We need to find Janelle for sneaking that uh, job on us. Yeah, she didn't tell us, right? You see, all things that are done in the dark must come to light. There you go. <laughs> I'm so oh. proud of her. Happy for her. And thanks for coming again, Simone. We enjoy having you here. Please come again. And hopefully we'll see you more and in another capacity very soon. Who knows? Thank That's you very much. Definitely. Thank you. Delisa, who's always here. Thanks for being here. And that is our open invitation for you to attend. Yes, you have meeting. an open invitation. And so, of course, Please join us as a member to of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise. What was so that feeling? To seeing you and again. Thank you and have a blessed day. Yes, yes. I'm sure Melanie will make it happen. <laughs> Can you see Melanie this morning? Yeah, Melanie was on. Mm. Karen P. You're glowing this morning. You look like an angel. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. The lighting yeah. is great. You look yeah. like an angel. That's God's son. Yeah, good to see you. Good Likewise. To see you. Although it's a little rainy out here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome, Leon. Anything for you? <laughs> You're gonna be Santa Claus come December. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All I need is my red suit. There you go. <laughs> Yeah.